It's just the most awesome theme in history. Come on. My name is Adaris, welcome to the review of Pacific Rim Uprising. So Pacific Rim Uprising is the sequel to the hit Pacific Rim. And this movie takes place 10 years after the former movie. The kaijus are nowhere to be seen because if you remember in the former movie they managed to close the rift between our world and their world. Which means the kaiju can no longer invade our world. That is a good thing. The bad thing however is that now we need something to set our plot in motion. Yeah. So the movie follows Jake, who is John Boyega's character, which is the son of Idris Elba's character from the former movie. And he's just living the free life with no responsibility and just going from place to place, partying and just forgetting the world. He then meets Amara, this teenager who has built her own mini Jaeger, and they get into a fight with the police and they are sent to military school. I don't know, that's gonna make you go... What? But why? But just, just go with it, just go with it. So it gets into this military base where Jake needs to train Amara and another bunch of kids to be able to piloting the Jaegers because someone thinks that there might be a possibility that the Kaijus come back. I don't know why they would think that, but they do think like that. So the first half of the movie is just him training them as well as there is this droid program where they want to take out the pilot of the Jaegers and then replace them with some droid Jaegers where you control them but from a base not inside of them. And that is basically the plot. However, there is something that goes wrong later on in the movie when they need to present something. Something attacks Sydney. I believe it's Sydney. And that kickstarts this movie. But for the most part, it's just him training them and this mystery of what initiated that attack. That is it. Now, I will not go here and bash on the plot of this movie because the plot of the former movie was not that great either. The movie knew that the reason you went to see it was not because of the plot or the acting or the humans. It was because you wanted to see giant robots finding mega monsters. And that is it. And that movie delivered on it. So, of course, when you go in to see this one, you want to see giant robots fighting mega monsters yeah all right first i'm gonna touch upon the good things about this movie firstly jakes and amara's relationship is fun to watch it does go from kidding strangers to almost a brother sister relationship too fast because you don't see that development but when they are on screen together that dynamic is extremely real and you buy it they joke they throw sarcastic insults at each other and it just feels like a real relationship between a teenager and a bum, drunken bum. And not just them, but generally all relationship in this movie is depicted quite well. You actually buy that these are real relationships. Even the relationship between the two doctors from the former movie has evolved since then. And I like the fact that they try to evolve the movie and the relationships and the world within it and not just make a sequel for the sake of making a sequel. Even though I'm pretty sure they made this sequel for the sake of making a sequel. The movie is also entertaining to watch because this investigation plot is actually quite intriguing given the context that this is just a Pacific Rim movie. And you do kind of wonder who was behind this attack. And you follow the investigation because it is the only fucking thing in the plot at this point. I also say that when the big fights are thrown down, they are entertaining to watch. Yes. But here is where I draw a line in the sand. This will be nitpicks, however they are important and I will get to the reason why at the end of my rant. Okay? We good? Good. 
Now, first off, the first fucking fight in this movie is not a fight. It is a small Jaeger running from a big Jaeger. That is it. It is made for comedic laughs. That is it. I don't mind that I want to open the movie with this, given the fact that the kaiju is no longer present on Earth because we closed the rift in the former movie. I don't mind that. We cannot open like the former movie. How? Ever once that is said and done, you need to wait 40 minutes, maybe a fucking hour to see the first giant fight in this movie. The only reason I bought a ticket to see this movie was to see the big giant robots fight big giant fucking monsters. That is the only reason anyone wants to see this movie. But that is not gonna happen. You're not gonna see monsters fighting robots. It ain't gonna happen until the fucking end. And I mean that. By the way, spoiler alert, you will first see them fight kaijus in the last 20 fucking minutes of this movie. What the fuck? Alright, I know there's other ways to make giant fights happen and not just being giant monsters and giant robots fighting each other. You can have giant robots fighting giant robots, but you need to make those fights entertaining. And here's my second nit. Pick the robots and the monsters and just everything giant in this movie, their weight is off. You don't feel the weight when they move. In the first one, you did because you can see that there was some struggle to get all that mass started moving. And when it was moving, there was a lot of weight. It took time to move something from A to fucking B. And then when something hit, you felt it. That was 2,000 tons of a fucking steel punch to that face. But not here, everything is just like light. It is floating around, every robot and monster is moving too quickly. And when something is walking or running or jumping or anything, you don't feel the weight when they land on the ground. How? How, how can you mess it up? You clearly saw in the former movie how to do it. You did it in the former movie. How can you not do it in this movie? And I know this is a nitpick, but this is the movie's selling point. It is these fights. If you don't get them right, then what is left of this movie? That makes sense with the fact that there's no awesome moments in these fights, except for one, and it is the last fucking thing done in this movie that is awesome. Everything else you just forget. Now let me give you an example here. In the first one, what do you remember? Well, you remember the fact that a robot used containers as brass snuggles to pummel a monster's face. You remember that a robot used a ship as a kendo staff to beat the living shit out of another monster. You remember the fact that one of the robots has a giant sword that sliced a flying monster in half. You remember the fact that a robot used a sword to pin down a monster and drag its face atop of an active volcano just to burn its face off. And hopefully you remember that a robot used its sword to slice a kaiju clean in half. The movie is filled with memorable awesome moments. This movie, however, ain't. It is just some quick moves around the enemy where you just want to get some few hits in and that is it. There's no elbow rocket moment, there is no giant sword moment, there's no using a building to throw at a person moment. Yes, there's a Jaeger who can use some gravity thing and throw things at the monsters, but it's not used well. It is not used memorable. You can just vaguely remember it and that is it. I know these things are nitpicks. This is not something that brings the movie down as a whole. However, the movie's selling points is these fights. The movie knows that the reason you come to see them is because of those fights. So if you don't nail your main selling point, that is a big problem on a movie. All right, ran, ran this over. Now this might seem that I'm throwing a lot of hate on this movie and I kind of am. However, I did know what I was going into. I was not going in to see the next Citizen Kane plot wise. The plot is okay and there is even a twist which yeah you know that twist should have been foreshadowed more it is foreshadowed a bit but it should have been foreshadowed a bit more you know however it is fun to see these kids train but i would have liked to see some more fear in them when they need to go into battle i want to see some more fear embedded in them when shit hits the fan they are fucking kids Okay, they did not grow up with war. They only experienced the war at their most youngest age. That is it. So they are not hardened by war. So I want to see more fear from 
But this movie is entertaining. It is fun to watch because when things get thrown down, you do enjoy it. Even though the weight is off, the fight is kind of boring if you compare it to the former movie and i would have loved to see more scenes play out at night because that was the great thing about the former movie is that it was at night everything was stark it was gritty it was kind of frightful and here almost every fight takes place during the day but besides that you will enjoy this movie for what it is it is a fun movie with some great relationships between characters characters bounce off each other quite well you will miss some character development but again this is specific rim that is not the focus point the focus point is the big monsters fighting the big robots and the fights do look fantastic but the execution of them could have been a lot better which bring this movie down unfortunately however i will say though that pacific rim uprising is worth watching in cinema entertainment guaranteed <laughs> you thought i would say you should watch it on netflix <laughs> you should though if it comes out on netflix you should so Pacific Rim Uprising, have you seen it? What did you think about it? And what is your favorite movie of the two? I will say the first one, but that's just me. Whatever you think, comment below and I'm gonna read your thoughts. And as always, until I see you in the next video, remember to stay awesome. Bye! <laughs>